Uh, I think first and foremost, um, you know, it was, it was a fun game. You know, I'm really proud of our team for battling and, and for putting ourselves in positions to get a win. Um, Tennessee is a team that did exactly what they should do. They made big plays when they needed it. Uh, whether it's rebounds, defensive stops, you know, key buckets. Uh, you know, they, they hit a lot of tough shots uh, and, and they did what, what, what great teams do. And, um, you know, I always talk to our team about how awesome of an opportunity it is to get a come and step foot in here and play in this gym and play in front of these fans. And, and I think just being able to, especially for our young kids, experience that um, in a competitive environment and put yourself in position to win a ball game, um, that's why we play the game. That's why we play the game. Any questions for Chelsea Hall or Mariana Masula? Yeah, Chelsea, you guys were down early 32 to 18. It looked like Tennessee had everything going for it. What turned it around for you guys, do you think? Um, I just think we, you know, playing a rival, you know, we want to lose big. So I think that we, we wanted to win, and we were, we've been itching for a win, and we just came out there and we played hard, and we played together. That's what we were talking about in the huddles, is playing together. And we just, once we got it to click, we just kept on going. Mariella, you were frustrating Tennessee's post at times. Did, did you see something on film or see something where maybe you could rattle them once you got them in the paint? Um, we just worked on and practiced a lot how to get it in the paint in, in the easiest position possible. Uh, Coach White emphasized a lot the easiest place for me to get it is in the middle of the floor where they can't bring a double. So we were just trying to do that, and my teammates were able to find me there better this game. Um, but yeah, I definitely think that it all comes from my teammates being able to knock down shots and open me up more uh, in the paint. Playing center. There were definitely times today where the crowd got pretty loud, especially down the stretches. How did the guys handle out on the court, especially in the pivotal moments? Um, I think when we came, uh, when we would huddle as a team, we would talk about it more and we could hear each other and stuff like that. Uh, I think that we just focused on the game plan and just knew what we had to do. So <clears throat> even when the crowd gets loud, I mean, it's fun to play in. So we just kind of got excited and it gave us more energy. Any other players? Thank you, guys. All right, we'll open up for questions for social life. Coach, in that last possession, your last position, we had a chance, I think, to tie. Or was that what you were looking for? It looked like you, your, your kids were a little rushed on, on those shots. Yeah, it was what we were looking for. You know, I think, um, you know, we got a, a freshman out there taking that shot who hadn't been in this position before. Um, and then I think understanding and feeling time and score. I mean, 14 seconds is a lot of time, and sometimes when you get in these positions um, and you're not, you haven't won in these positions, you do get rushed. Um, but we executed. We got... We had two really good looks. We got the ball to Kaylin. She didn't knock it down. We got another opportunity um, and, and just didn't fall for us. And we had two great opportunities before that. You know, I think Chelsea Hall had one in the, in the corner and then one at the top of the key. So, you know, at the end of the day, that just comes down to, to being able to, in the moment, knock down shots. Uh, Cassie Kushkidawa, number 11, yep. stuck probably one of the biggest jumpers she's hit yes. this season. Not who anyone would have expected to be taking that shot. Is that sometimes what these games come down to? Just somebody you don't expect to make a shot makes one? There is no doubt about it. No doubt about it. You know, we, we, we knew that Tennessee was going to try to expose our little guards down low with their big, long wings. And we had to give as much help as we could. And when you think about, you know, you look on a scouting report, you got to give up something. And that was what we gave up, and she knocked that down. And she got a huge offensive rebound off a free throw. I mean, coming in, they had made that, I think it was a 6-0 run at the time. Timeout, uh, you know, they're shooting the free throw. They miss, so we have an opportunity to get another possession. And I felt that that rebound putback was big, was big. You know, coach. Yeah, you know, from the uh, from the perspective of just watching the game, it almost felt like it was a game that was just teetering on the brink of a blowout. Yeah, you know, for most of the game. Um, just how were you all kind of able to 
you know, kind of stay in and in the game, but didn't necessarily feel like he was going to be. Yeah, you know, I think I, I think we probably felt like that early, especially. Um, and you know, the, the reality is, you've got two young core groups, right, with both teams, and and when you have young players, the game is going to ebb and flow, and they're going to be peaks and valleys, and they're going to be runs, and. You know, when you have experienced teams, like like some teams in our leagues do, then they always put the hammer down, right? So I, I think, you know, for us, the biggest thing we talk about is just chipping away. Like, it's got to be one possession at a time. We have to be completely locked in defensively and, and, and be able to get a stop. And then we've got to be completely locked in on the offensive end and be able to get a score. And, you know, the, the reality for us is this game came down to, to the extra possessions, the 22 offensive rebounds, the 20 turnovers that, that they were able to capitalize on. You know, the seven missed free throws that we weren't able to capitalize on. Um, but I think this is exactly what you should expect in the SEC, and, and, and it's a battle. And, and both teams continue to make runs, and, and it's what um, it's what you have to do to position yourself to be able to win ball games. And, and I felt like they just made the, the last biggest run. Coach, a, a non-question about this game. Yep. Just want to ask you about Tamika Catchings, who you yeah, played with, yeah. and obviously Coach. Just the the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame and now a finalist for yeah. the Smith. Just what what does she meant to the game? Now I'm gonna get emotional. <laughs> I mean, you guys know how special Tamika Catchings is. Not just a special player, but just a special human being. And she is somebody who has outworked, outwilled, outtoughed nearly everybody that's played this game. And to be a part of, of her legacy as a teammate, as a competitor, as a coach, um, and, and to be able to have been impacted by the type of person that she is, is something that, that I am so incredibly grateful for. She is the best of everything that we want our young women to grow up to be. Um, when, whenever I talk to special players about who they should want to emulate, it's her. How she played the game, how she carried herself, things that are important to her, how she treats people. Um, she's the best. And I'm so incredibly proud of her. I'm so incredibly proud for her. Uh, and I cannot wait to get down here when she's when she's inducted into the Hall of Fame, and I know she's going to be a Naismith Hall, Hall of Famer as well. But uh, she's she's one of a kind, and I'm so 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 proud of her and happy for her.